Friday. By the right, quick march. And what happens was, the start outside the village, you, you hear the orange men before you see them. If you're heading towards the village, you can hear the, the, the sounds coming over the hills, and then all of a sudden you see them peering down the road, and then the sound gets louder and all the rest of it. And what I noticed the first time I'd been to Ross, and I, uh, the first time was about 1989 or something like that, and, uh, and I have pictures from there. Ross now is a black march. So there's a lot of temperance bonds, no alcohol, signs up all around the place, no alcohol. And what happened was, uh, what happens is the, the, the bondsmen, they head over the dunes and the privacy of the sand dunes and stuff like that. And that's where they have a couple of drinks and stuff like that and, and relax. But some of the orange men, it's an opportunity, if the weather's half decent, they'll take a walk down to the beach. Some of them will ro ro take their shoes off. And there was another photographer down there at the time taking pictures of this. So I walked down and anyway, they were still there, they were having a yarn and they were still there when I got down. And I just had an opportunity before they split up to take three photographs. But I think I caught it, I just, the umbrella was sitting here. And then the, the way they were standing, it just everything just came in and I kept a wee bit of the sky in. Um, and I, I just found someone come in the day and LOL 1845 I think it is. Someone told me the day that that point that was a Queen's University Lodge, that there's a large lodge in Queen's and that's 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 where this comes from, you know. All my photographs are not that's that's exactly what I was looking through the camera. When I took that, I don't crap any of my negatives. That is exactly every photograph here is exactly what I was looking at when I took when I pressed the pressed the shutter. And uh, I knew it was going to be a nice photograph, but it seems to be the most, everybody's commenting on it, you know. You know, they're looking out into the sea and, um, you know, what are they talking about? I'd love to know, I'd love to be the fly in the banner. <laughs> to hear what the conversation was, you know. But this, another thing too, the Ross Nowla is the only orange parade outside the north. You know, carnival atmosphere, very relaxed. And the three times I've been there in the last three years, the weather has been exactly the same, warm but overcast, which is good for me because uh, overcast conditions are better for black and white photography. I don't, I don't like strong sunlight, harsh shadows, things like that. So the the weather's always been perfect there for me. It's a great day out. I like the one over there. I think if I can walk over to this one here. It's one of those things. One of those things where everything just sort of fell in the place at the right time. Then we're getting the photograph taken. He put the camera up. But the way the banner was, the crown just appeared on top of her head, as if it was sitting on her head. And the way the those streams of sun, uh, the sun, I think, sort of blended in with her hair as well. And the crown just sitting on top of her head. We, I like moments like that where things just click into place and it makes for a good photograph. The way, the way I was positioned in the scarf for that, I was kneeling down. The crowds were so intense that I had to find a place to, while the, the parade was coming in. And I sat down and then I, I, I do, I done something that I normally don't do, is tilt the camera. Because I was seeing the way they were walking in and it worked out perfectly the way the, and he just stuck the, the sheet of music into his mouth at the same time.
I like, I just, I like the way I capture the kids. Sort of concentrating on the, on the sheet music, you know. This one here, I like because uh, it's a technique called flash burn. It's a simple technique where you lower your shutter speed, especially when it's dark. I think it was a quarter of a second, but with a, a fill-in flash, just and it freezes certain aspects of it, certain highlights of it, but ac accentuate the movement, and you can almost f f feel the, the, the movement. There, there's movement in it, and he was hammering and he was hammering away at that drum. The same happened here, just after this photograph. This one here was taken, where again, a bit of, just a wee slight bit of fill-in flash. The lighting up, or else they would have been, uh, they would have been silhouettes. Just added a wee, not too much detail, but just enough. So it's not very respectful for the Queen to have like pull up her skirt, but there you go. <laughs> On page 87, a grassy bank with orange men disappearing, almost disappearing, almost dematerializing. I find it absolutely entrancing. I find it entrancing. And it's the simplicity of it. And it's a plain sky, it's not got pretty sky type of uh, blue sky and white cloud. It's just an ordinary sky. And everything is mundane, but it fascinates me. The geometry and the variety of geometrics that's in there, and it just, it just grabs me. I really like it. Uh, circles, angles of... Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan, a drama therapist living in Belfast, Northern Ireland. What grabs my attention here is the left arm, the clenched fist behind, supporting the small of the back. You can see the edge of the shirt. You can see the stark white against the black of the body. You can see the shape of the body. But for some reason, this man is holding his brolly tightly or lightly but his hands are behind his back but overall i like the square shape of the photographs the squareness as opposed to rectangular long ways or sideways but the squareness and the squareness seems appropriate. I love the uh, V of here, the V, the vortex. These are like space aliens with their helmets. You can see their place, but if you just look at it, and then you have the regular public here, and it's a public place, but it's ensconced in a place or triangle. Please, please. But aliens to everyday life. They're masked. And then the nature, you know, tree, a tree spiking up in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm totally impressed. I'm really impressed with Frankie's work. He has sustained something in city centre of Belfast that is open to everybody. His, his eye for capture and human emotion, human feeling, with a tenderness and with an emotion. Do you know, it's not a malicious thing. So it's, it's the truth and honesty of the eye. And it's simple, it's simple, honestly, simple everyday life that draws me to this gallery in city centre. I'm Stevie Ray Lynn. I'm from the States. 
from California specifically. I have been here to volunteer for the exhibition and to help for the post-production of the work. I just graduated from a BFA at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, his aesthetic and his style, to be behind the, um, the subjects themselves so closely though, I mean it, it takes some gall to be that close to the subject, but still have the candidness. So I've always enjoyed his, his closeness, something that as a photographer I'm still learning myself. It's been amazing to see the, the series itself. I feel like it has a passiveness to his background, but at the same time an intrigue because of his photography. For sure, the cover is a big one. Um, being there with him at Rasnala, photographing right behind him, it, it was amazing to see the beach scene. For me, it was the first orange uh, parade that I was a part of. To just kind of participate in a way, but still be an outsider. Because it gives so much weight to our humanity and so much that we need to know. Yeah, I mean, I, I was right behind him in this moment when he took the photograph. 